is Dr. Omari Cartman. Um, I should actually be introducing myself as Iyawo, as a signifier of this, this part in the transition that I'm in, and an um, initiation into the African spiritual system. Initiation with the play of a young man, with the things that they're interested in, and the chapters, and the and the lack of our sort of community structures of our rites of passage is that the young men are growing up to be men through the models that they see. And so we need to help them digest that and figure out what's good and bad about that and have some discernment around what are the values of like that that don't condemn sexual orientations that are alternate, that you know, same gender loving conversations should have a, a place, and that we should have a right to allow people to love who they want to love, but also think about whether or not there's a, a shift in the culture where access to those kind of images are confusing young men in ways that um, are not necessarily organic and authentic. And so when we think about the, the teenage years, the identity forming years, that, that, that they find themselves in a, a process of finding themselves. They're trying to figure out who they are, what they are, and if their, their, their role models are wearing dresses and um, you know getting their nails painted. That, that, that there's something about that that is, is, is a freedom, that there's an expression, that there's something that's, that's liberating about that, but then there's also at the same time something about what that means for um, how you define what a masculine man means and what are the challenges to that. Yes means yes, all, all the time. You don't, have to, you, don't, you don't want to wait for babies. There's no gray area. You have to teach men to only get complete, clear consent before you engage in any activity with a woman. Um, and that there's nothing cool or fun or, or powerful about um, getting women to do something that she did not want to do. So the conversations part, I think, is important for me because a lot of times when I see adults engaging with young people, that they do it with a really judgmental, heavy hand, finger point, like, um, we, we, we've also we, we've gotten really used to berating our young people. We tell them that their that their clothes are stupid, the music is stupid, that the, the way they talk is stupid, and that 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 really creates lots of barriers for understanding young people and for guiding them in, with the wisdom that the elders have and the people with experience have. But um, but we can't get to them because they seem like you know, and it's, it's something that happens every generation. All, all the young people always feel like the old people don't get them. And old people think the young people don't get them. But I think that there's a, a chasm of the generations right now because of technology that feels wider than normal. And so what I, what I like to do when I encourage young people and people that work with young people to do is have conversations. Um, to be able to really engage with young people and not judge them and not, you know, attack them. Um, I hear a lot of times young men, they, they come to me in schools and they say that there, there was a moment where they went home and they wanted to have a conversation with their mother or their father. And as soon as they walk in the door, they're attacked with sort of this barrage of, of insults. I'm going to pull your pants up, you know, go to your room, but uh, stop. To turn that music off so loud. So that, that, that becomes a moment that could have been a, a transformative moment or a healing moment, but it gets thwarted with a, a, a man being like, okay, well, forget it. Now I don't even want to talk no more. And so the, the reason I wanted to write the book in a very easy, simple, conversational way that had lots of questions in it, I don't do a lot of lecturing, is because at the root of that, I understand the young men to be um, fundamentally intelligent beings that if they have the right opportunities, if they have the right questions, they can figure some of this stuff out. It's called Ladies Man, this is me, on the cover of it with my five sisters. So the idea was, when I, when I titled the book Ladies Man, um, and, and I show young men this, this picture, and they'll see the image, and they'll see you know, beautiful women around me, and they, 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 they caught on to the traditional idea of what a ladies man is, when they talk about being a ladies man in school or in the communities, that, that has a different connotation and I, what, I, what I would like to do with this book is transform the meaning of what that, that idea means. So when I say ladies man, I spell it with the apostrophe S. But what I mean is I as a man belong to the ladies in my life. I am my mother's son. And so everybody in the world came through at least that one woman. And so when I think about repositioning the way we, 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 we relate to women, that we need to be considering ourselves accountable to the women in our life. And, 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 not, and not tell the stories about, about Manhood being a thing where women belong to us, where you know we collect women, we use women, 
that women are, are, are sexual or play things. Um, I want to reshift that conversation for men and, and for, for the health and benefit of our families. Um, so that's why I call it ladies' man. And, and so, so when I give the book to, to the young men, they say, oh, you know, I want to read that. That's, that looks interesting. You get to teach me about how to pick up a, a bunch of girls. But then as soon as you open the cover, you, you realize that they're my sisters, there becomes a shift in the consciousness. And so that's part of what I would like to encourage young men to do is to think about how you engage with women as if they're your sisters, as if they are your actual blood, as if they, they you belong to them. And, and, and women, I understand to be, you know, they're the, the, the power makers, they're the, the purveyors of life on the planet. So I, I think that we need to be more responsible to think about our role as protectors and providers, and not in an old-fashioned, dominated kind of sense, but in a, in a real, meaningful, genuine, authentic way. So that's the book. So the idea is to be able to introduce these kind of conversations, but also to be a bridge between some of the elders and, the, and the, the, the cultural communities that I come from, and to be able to repackage and retranslate some of those ideas into the modern times. So there's lots of things that have happened in the last couple of decades. You know, again, with technology, with social media, that have transformed the culture for young people, and we need to be able to have some folks that are, you know, I'm 35, have folks in those mid-ranges to be able to be the bridges between, you know, the kind of folks that read my book, Nice, Akbar, Jawaz Kumbuju, for the kind of people that I studied as I was becoming a man, trying to take their ideas and then, um, in, in some ways, just repackage it for the young generation. Um, I decided to write... Different, different issues and concerns. I'm finding I'm so, finding many, so many, many different mentalities that it, 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 it seems hard. It seems challenging. challenging. I don't say it's hard because the only thing hard is the concrete that we walk on. Everything else is a challenge. Is a challenge. Um, um, so, so, I'm ready for, I'm this, ready challenge. for this challenge. And I was built, and I was built for this.